Hello everybody, welcome to ChinFat. Uh, I am now starting a new tutorial on Premiere Pro 2020, uh, which has just been recently released. I'll be covering a lot of items, uh, kind of showing how to operate the software here. If you go to my ChinFat channel and go to the playlist uh, Premiere Pro 2020, you'll be able to see the new modules as I begin to add them. I'll be adding them on a weekly basis until I have several episodes, kind of going, um, having a, a fairly comprehensive uh, coverage of the entire software. So when we first root up Premiere Pro, this is what we've got here. This this episode specifically is on uh, the splash screen here that, that, that pops up. The next episode, I'm going to be going over preferences. Uh, but up here, we've got uh, our home uh, area here. Home is going to do a, few, a couple different things. First of all, you have a bunch of recent projects. If you've been working on certain projects, you're going to be able to go and click on these projects and they will load that project that you've been working on. It'll show uh, when they were last opened. Uh, I'll show the size and show what type of file. It's Premiere Pro project. It also supports the Premiere Rush project as well. If you're editing things on a cell phone, if you're editing, if you're editing things on a smartphone or a tablet uh, with Premiere Pro Rush, you can bring that project over to Premiere Pro, and it will be supported here, and it will open it up and open up what editing, whatever editing, editing you have done on Premiere on Premiere Rush. And right below home here, we go down. You've got the item. You've got the option of creating a new project if you're starting a brand new project, or open a project if it's not listed here. You can hit open project. And you can navigate to a location that you may have a different uh, project. And you can open that project, and then um, it will restore project from a location that you tell it to go to there. So and something kind of important when you're opening up, an, up a, a previous project, if you just updated your software to the Premiere Pro 2020 to the latest version, so if you had a, a project that was saved in uh, Premiere Pro 2019 or 2018, or even uh, uh, earlier than that, uh, and you open up this project in this new software, it's going to want to update it. If you would go to, so if I go to one of my earlier projects here uh, and open it up, and it was saved in an earlier project, it's going to say, it's going to say this project was saved from a previous version and must be converted. So once you convert this, it cannot go back. It will not overwrite the original file, but it will save a new project file. It's going to ask you whatever you want to name it. I usually add the name 2020 or whatever software you're working with uh, at the end of the project name and hit OK. And it will open up the project now with the new project file saved. And my project opens up and now the new project. Oh, look, uh, notice up here is saved at this location. You'll see the location where it's saved up here uh, under my H drive under this folder. And that is the new project file right there. And here I am ready to go. I'm going to close this project and go through more of options on the uh, splash screen. I'm going to go to file and do close project. And if you want to save it, say yes. This is the new updated saved one. So I'm going to say yes and save it. And it goes back to the splash screen. You have new project for creating new projects. A couple things on when you create a new project. First of all, let's go over this. A couple things on when you open up a new project here is it's going to ask you for a location where you want to save your project and for the name of your project. So I can simply click on browse and go to my uh, go to a hard drive. If I'm going to start a new project, I'm going to make a new folder here. I call this practice project. I'm going to double click on that. And this is going to be the folder. And usually if you create a folder, you're going to be uh, saving all your media in here. You're going to be transferring your media into here and then importing the, it into Premiere Pro. Right now I'm just creating a project. So I'm going to say select folder. And now that's the folder location on this hard drive here. And then I'm going to go under name and call this whatever I want to call this. So I'll just call this practice project. I usually like to end my project names with projects so you can quickly find project files if you're looking for them, if you're doing a search. But now I can hit OK and it will save that. But let's go a few but let's go through a couple other things here. Under this new project tab, you have a few project settings. First of all, you have this general tab, and under general tab, you have a, a renderer for video playback. This video playback renderer is very important. You want to make sure that it is on your GPU acceleration. If it is not on GPU acceleration uh, and it is on software only, uh, your editing is going to be incredibly slow. You do not want to have it on software only. If this is grayed out and you cannot choose GPU for some reason, sometimes you have to update to the latest video drivers. And the way you do that is I recommend going to Google and typing in GeForce Experience. Uh, that, is, is if, that is if you have an NVIDIA supported video card, which most cards are. They also You, you may have some others. If you have an NVIDIA supported video card, you can go to the software, you can download it, and this will be installed on your computer. Uh, just hit download and, and install it to your computer. And once that's running, you can go down to your taskbar here and click on this, and you can right click down on uh, NVIDIA GeForce. You can right click on this NVIDIA GeForce icon right there and go to NVIDIA GeForce Experience. It will open the software. And you're going to click on drivers and you're going to see right here if you've got you can do check for updates if it hasn't already checked and it will uh, check to make sure what you're 
to see if it, it will check to see if there are new drivers you need to install and you can hit express and installation and update your your graphics card if you're working on a mac usually mac is pretty good about uh, updating updating your video drivers through the automatic uh, updates it's on the computer so you usually don't have to worry about it on a mac with a pc you can ex do express installation and install the new drivers once that's done you will you will have to close premiere and restart premiere usually you don't have to restart the computer it doesn't help, it doesn't hurt to restart the computer but you really don't have to and then when you restart Premiere, this should no longer be grayed out, and you'll have access to the GPU, your graphics card acceleration, which will make editing very tolerable. It won't, will, will not be chugging and lagging as much as it would if it's on the software option there. Moving down here, you've got video uh, display format. Time code is the standard. If you're working on film, you can do film. And th this is kind of an antiquated uh, item here. You can do film feet and frames, especially if you're doing something that was transferred from film and you're editing it to video and it was going back to film. Uh, this is would be very important, but that really does not happen anymore. People still shoot on film, but once it's transferred digitally, it pretty much stays digital and you never see the film again. So typically you're going to keep this on time code. Uh, audio, audio samples in milliseconds. If you do audio samples, it's going to basically translate that to frames, to, uh, to your video frame rate, whatever the video frame rate you are working on. Milliseconds is going to really give you access to the audio uh, sampling. Uh, you'll be able to add audio down to the sample, which will be several samples of audio per frame, per frame of video. Uh, so audio samples is typically the way to go, unless you're going to be getting really nitpicky and editing audio. If you're an audio, uh, if you're an audio mixer and you're very familiar, you'll be very familiar with this, but audio samples is the, the standard way to go. Capture format, this is fairly antiquated here as well. Capture format, if you've got DV, this is old uh, DV tape, uh, digital video tape and HDV, high, def high definition video tape here as well. Uh, different, two different types if you're capturing, you gotta tell what format you're capturing. Uh, but like I said, this is fairly antiquated. Uh, most car most cameras shoot on solid state cards now and you just plug your solid state cards in you don't have to capture the footage you just transfer it over to your hard drive going over to the next tab here i'm going to go to scratch disks scratch disks uh once again this is hate to say it but for a little bit antiquated uh with scratch disks uh, this is going to tell you where it is capturing your video and audio too if you're capturing it from a tape uh, as you go down to video previews this is kind of important though as you um have to render files if you're doing effect work within Premiere Pro. This is going to this is uh, where it's going to save those files at those rendered files. Uh, audio previews as well if it's rendering audio effects. Uh, and this is fairly important right here. This uh, project auto save. It's going to be saving everything. All these items here are going to be saving in the same folder as your project file by default. You can change those. Uh, one example why you might want to change is auto save. If your hard drive crashes. Uh, you may you might not want to have your autosave project in the same location as your regular project file because if, if it crashes, you no longer have access to uh, your project file. But if, if you got a legit uh, Adobe account, every time you save, it is backing up your it is backing up your project to the Creative Cloud. Uh, so you also have a backup there. So, but autosave is very helpful if you uh, do something. If you do something where you've deleted a where you've deleted a timeline or a sequence of clips or something, uh, and you and you don't realize it till much later on, you can go back and look through your auto save files and uh, open those up until you restore a, an earlier version of your project. In just settings, in just settings is if you if you want Premiere Pro to do the transferring from your solid state card from your camera to your computer or to your hard drive automatically. Once you import the, your files, and you can import them directly from a uh, solid state card. We'll have an episode on this in the future, but you can import, uh, you can plug your SD card into, into your computer that ha contains the camera footage, and you can start and you can import it directly into Premiere and start editing it right away. And in the background, it will be transferring it to your hard drive uh, as you edit. Um, that way you can start editing right away from your uh, camera card, but it's also transferring. So you can unplug your camera card later on and then come back to your computer and your footage will be transferred over to your hard drive for you. Uh, you typically do this manually on your own, but this this is another aid in helping it you transfer so you can start editing immediately. We will have an episode on that. I'm going to cancel that, go back to the splash screen. So moving on down here, learn. Uh, this is kind of nice. Something that they post they've, that Adobe's been doing in the last couple of years is they've been having a learn tab. As they come out with new features, they have these tutorial videos. But you don't want to watch them because I want you to watch my tutorial videos. So don't watch these. Watch mine. But now you can click on some of these and learn how to do some basic Premiere technique here. They will also oftentimes po um, post videos of their newest updates here, so you can go through and see what their newest updates are and see what they, and see how to use them. 
But some of these items here at the top are actually project files rather than videos. These are these are video files down here, and these ones are actual uh, project files. If you click on one of these, this is kind of cool. If you're just learning, uh, it will open up an actual project file with some footage, some sound, some graphics, some other things that you can work with here in your timeline. And it will have a learn panel here on the side that teaches you uh, what your different windows are and how to edit, and it'll give you some basic instruction on uh, uh, with some footage already installed in your with some footage already imported and edited down in your timeline here. So kind of cool. So I'm going to go up to File, and we're going to close this project and say, no, I don't want to save. Now we go down to the next tab here, which is Sync Settings. Sync Settings, if you have a legit account uh, with Creative Cloud, which you pretty much have to have, if you do changes on your preferences, things like keyboard shortcuts and window layouts, you can restore those items by hitting Sync Settings now if you are on a different computer. If you get on a new computer and install Premiere Pro and log in, you can sync those settings to that computer. If you're working on somebody else's computer that has Premiere Pro, uh, and you can you can log into your account and you can sync the settings down to that computer so you can have access to your, your settings, your custom settings that you've created. Or you can also borrow settings from a different account. If you click on that, it will ask you to log into that different account, and you can uh, sync the settings from a different account to this to, to this project without logging logging out of the account that's currently logged into. New project, an open project we've gone through. Uh, this does have uh, from the splash screen. You do have a compatibility with uh, Premier Rush, which is a smartphone and uh, tablet app. Uh, for qu doing quick editing on a, on a phone or on a on a tablet, and uh, you can send those projects to yourself, and you can open up those projects. And if you do, if you're out in the field and you're shooting, you can do some quick editing on your Premiere Rush uh, app, and then you can open them up in Premiere Pro and continue editing from there. And down here, you've got new team projects. I'm going to be doing a. Um, um, I'm going to be doing an episode on this in the future. If you're working with a production group, so we have assistant editors and editors working on the same project, it will show who's doing changes at what time, and it will show who has access to the project. You can also lock a timeline that you're working in so nobody else can touch it, and then you can open it up for other people to, to edit later on, and then it will be a shared project file. It will be a shared project file for the team. All right, well, that's a quick introduction to the splash screen on uh, Premiere Pro. The next episode, we're going to be going through uh, setting up your preferences uh, for Premiere.